Hi, Spring fans. You know, I'm looking again at the amazing new Spring Framework 7 and Spring Boot 4.0 releases, and another feature that's really struck my eye uh, is the radically improved HTTP client support, that is to say the interface based client. So we're going to look at that in this video and let's just go through kind of what it gives you out of the box today, right? So we'll create a new project here. I'll be using Spring Framework 7 and Spring Boot 4.0 snapshots. I'll bring in the web dependency. That's really all that I need. You could build a, a GraalVM native image application and as well you should. Let's go ahead and hit generate and we'll open this up in our ID. So here's, here's the, here's what that situation looks like. Let's say I wanted to build a client for this cat fact API, right? This is an, a REST API. You can call it and it'll give you back some data. You make this request here with an HTTP GET and it'll return a payload with a fact and a length, giving you a random fact about a cat. So let's say I create a cat fact client, right? And of course, the, the old way to do it might be to use the old wonderful REST client, which I love, right? The REST client's awesome. So we'll inject that there, that builder dot build, yeah. And maybe I'll have a record here to represent the returned value. So fact and int length. Okay, and we'll say cat fact fact turn this dot http dot get dot uri http. And then you know we want to put this whole https URL in there. So I'll do that. Dot retrieve dot body dot uh, we want to say cat fact, don't we? So there we go. That's not bad. Let's just try that out. Well, when the program starts up, when the program's when the program starts up, we'll inject the catfact client and use it to make a request, like so. Okay, pretty pretty straightforward. We'll make this a component. This could be a underscore. Let's just run that and see what we get. Okay, it's saying we don't have a REST client builder, so let's define a bean of type REST client builder. Awesome. So that's worked, and it wasn't all that bad. You can kind of understand what's going on here. We got a REST client. We're making a call to an endpoint. We get a payload back. Fine. This is fine in this case, but this is just one endpoint on one API. As you start to scale up your service development, it's entirely possible you have more than one endpoint with which you need to interact. Uh, and so it becomes a little tedious to have to manage all this, and goodness knows how much fun it'll be to start adding authentication and the like. So in Spring Framework 6, from 2022, right? They added the ability to create declarative clients, not using git mapping, but git exchange. So I'll put the same URL in there, cat fact fact, and you have to define this as a bean, okay? So we've got now two beans, okay? And we'll say HTTP service proxy factory dot builder dot exchange adapter rest client adapter dot create injecting again the uh, rest client here we'll say builder dot build and then build and that'll give you a, a factory which you can then you can actually store this right you can save this and use this to create multiple declarative interfaces but i'm just going to create the one so it's a little bit of a waste here and then the same thing the code over here so now we've got the bean defined we can just go ahead and rerun the program and we have the same result fine it's not so bad but again we we shaded uh, the complexity of building one actual interface uh, implementation for the complexity of factoring that implementation altogether. So what if we could do better? What if we could do something like we were able to do in Spring Cloud Fane or in uh, Spring Cloud Square or re Retrofit, right? I mean, all these things, you could just do component scanning of the sort. So that's actually a thing that's now in Spring Framework 7. So let's get rid of that. And let's just start with a very simple example here. We'll say client configuration at configuration. We'll say import HTTP services, and you can just start with that, right? The actual base class. Let's see if that works. Okay, that's worked. It just found the interface. Great. What about if I want to find more than one? What if I just want to say base package is equal to that? That works. I wonder if this works. I don't know. I'm, this is the first time I've played with this new support. No. Okay, well, you have to specify a base package. Not a big deal, right? So there's that. You can also do groups. You can say, okay, I want a group you know, for uh, weather or whatever, and then I can have classes, types equals cat fact client dot class. And then now, you know, maybe it's not weather, maybe it's cats or whatever, I don't know. You could have different groupings for different clients that are registered and configured a certain way. So, you know, I could restart this, okay? So what has it done in practice? Well, it's just, it's grouped these together under a label called cats. Now, maybe I could do dev or Q&A, or maybe I'm doing OAuth with different providers, whatever. It becomes useful to then be able to refer to those clients by a string, kind of like a qualifier. And why is that useful? Because then you can configure them. 
So let's register a bean of type REST client HTTP service group configurer. Okay, and there's the groups. And now we can filter for each group or filter by name. We can say cat, right? That's the group there. And then for each client, we get a builder, you know, whatever. So let's do new callback. And with it, within that callback, we have the group and then the client builder. So you can actually configure things here, like the default auth header, for example. Let me see, default headers, headers. There you go. You can set the default basic auth for all requests built by this, this REST client builder, right? So you can actually configure defaults. You can actually configure whether, whether this needs to do basic auth or OAuth. You could configure default headers. You could, you know, anything you can imagine wanting to stipulate en masse for a bunch of different interfaces. You can do that here just by referring to them by their group. Isn't that convenient? So obviously we don't need auth here. I wonder if this would even work. It might even break things because I don't know that the downstream API even expects auth, but we'll try it. Okay, it's fine. Well, anyway, in any event, uh, that's that's worked just fine. So you can also programmatically register these interfaces. There's actually a abstract type that you can use. We'll say static class my registrar implements abstract HTTP service registrar. Okay. Override that method. Or maybe it's a base class. Extend that. Okay. And you just import that in the normal way. So import class. All right. And here maybe instead of doing this explicitly via component scanning as we've done here, let's comment out uh, that and we'll say registry dot for default group or for a group called cats, register cat fact client dot class. Nice. Okay. So now we've got, you know, we've got, it's a much, you, you have a lot of potential here, but the simplest thing is just an annotation and a base package, right? That'll get you a long way away. And the rest of this is not all that new. There is one new thing related to the configuration component model for these interfaces in particular. Apparently, per the documentation, you can now return input streams, right? So input stream, here you go. REST client adapter provides additional support for return value of input stream or response entity input stream, right? So what is that? Is that, I just saw that in the docs, where is that? Yeah. It's now possible to provide an output stream for the request body through a streaming output message dot body method parameter and also to consume the response through an input stream or response entity uh, input stream. Very, very convenient.